Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to episode two of the Pure Connect Communities Q&A show, the show where we answer your pressing questions in the Genesis Online community. My name is Matt Lawson. I am your online community manager. And today we have a new expert joining us. I mean, it's only episode two, so that probably goes without saying, but really excited to have Chuck Kirkpatrick on the call. Uh, Chuck, I think is gonna walk us through how to build a bot as part of his expert pick segment. And then of course, we'll get into answering some of your questions in the community. So. Let's go ahead and get started. Chuck, welcome to the program. Fantastic to be here today. <laughs> cool. Um, so Chuck, I don't know if you've seen the show before, but just in case you haven't, um, how the show works is, of course, we'd love to you know, hear a little bit about you. So do you mind going ahead and just introducing yourself real quick, talking a little bit about what you do at Genesis? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm Director of Product Management for PureConnect, our mid-market platform. Uh, I work with uh, lots of people who have spent time you know, developing out a platform for 20 years, and now we're in the process of, of shifting gears a little bit and shifting away from some on-premises things to more hybrid and cloud things. And so there's a lot of great conversations I'm in the midst of about, you know, what kind of APIs are we going to set up and which cloud are we supporting and all this good stuff. But it's really uh, an extension of product management work that I've done for 15, 18 years, have, have spent a lot of time really focusing on how do you figure out what a customer wants and what they actually want, not what they say they want. And then how do you connect that into either website or web development that really allows them to have the features and the value points that matter and, you know, makes competitive sellable software along the way. Um, Chuck, I understand today you wanted to come on the show and do a quick demo maybe of um, how to build a bot. Is that correct? Sure. Um, what I've got uh, is a uh, uh, sort of summary video. And I think, uh, what's helpful is kind of to give some context as we're talking about bots, as we're working our way through what has been IVR or phone tree technology and what's becoming uh, speech recognition, leveraging into other cool things that a bot can do. You know, really just want to kind of frame the discussion by saying that the chance to change up your front door for a customer is simpler easier, more flexible than, than we've had ever before. So the, the technologies involved in bots are really just an extension of what we've been doing for 20 years or more. Genesis is a leader in building out the front door for, for businesses, their phone system and their phone tree. And that IVR technology isn't suddenly going away, it's being blended into different kinds of bot technologies to help you get an answer more quickly about how can I help you today? Or can we authenticate you so that I can start using your name and make you re feel really happy about that? Those, <clears throat> those types of refreshes for your IVR are readily available now, and we'll continue to refine and specialize those for different verticals over the next year. Awesome. Well, anything that can get me through the lobby, through the halls, and to a specialist sooner would always make me very happy. So what do you think? You want to go ahead and start your, uh, your demo? You got it. I hope you can see over here, you know, we're talking about multi-mode bot solutions and really <clears throat> this solution is about a digital first approach. So in looking at the video we've got, you're directly on an iPhone, somebody snaps a shot of a QR code and all that's doing <clears throat> is leading you directly in, low battery messages notwithstanding, but leading you directly into a flow where you can now start to step through the screens, step through the choices that you want your customer to have. Our bot solutions aren't limited to voice, they aren't limited to chat. They can pull you into a mobile um, IVR solution. They can pull you into several different kinds of channels. So it's not about the channel anymore. You know, how am I gonna offer bot solutions on voice or digital or whatever? It's really about you pick what experience you want your customer to have and we'll support you. And what this video eventually steps into is that anything that they're doing in that mobile IVR world, they can then make a call, reach out directly to an agent, do the things they need to do to, to bring up a different channel. But it's, it's all aimed at building something once and deploying it wherever you need it, which is a really powerful next step for these kinds of technologies. Well, thank you so much for all the information. Anything you want to uh, close this discussion on, like any other notes, anything in particular you want to um, just point right. out to customers or remind them of? Right. Well, you know, 
the, the most important conversations uh, that, that we're having with customers this year are around um, the different kinds of channels that a customer may want to expand into next. And when you're thinking about a different channel, your end customers already have channels that they want to be reached on. So it may be that um, they'd like to be able to SMS text in instead of having to wait in a long, long phone queue. It may be that they want to hop on Facebook and Twitter and, and send in messages and say, hey, business that isn't responding on the phone, I'd like to tell the world about my frustration. And whatever that channel is that matters to your end customer, we have opportunities and ways that you can leverage that within our existing tools. So the channel shouldn't matter, but figure out what channels do matter to your end customers. It's not gonna stop you. It's, it's actually gonna empower you to provide that next level of, of customer experience. And I would say with bots and anything else, where we've seen a lot of customer conversations is around the simplest beginning use cases. Identifying who the customer is with a bot and then asking them, what do you need help with today? So rather than think, I don't really understand this technology and this is so complicated, instead of the complicated stuff, start with the simple stuff. Would it help you to have 30 seconds cut off your call identifying the customer? Would it help you to um, know who the customer is and have some keywords of where they want to go? If yes, then we've got bot solutions that could start for your voice channel, voice bots, or bot solutions that can start on your chat channel um, with chat bots. And we can add those to any other channel that matters. So think small, think the next step, and then build from there. And I think you'll find there is an exciting world of new technology that makes that simple, flexible, amazing customer experience possible. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that, Chuck. This has been a really fun discussion. Um, to everybody watching, if you have any discussions, go ahead and post in the community. You never know, Chuck might just stop by and help you out. All right, Chuck, unfortunately, your expertise may no longer be beneficial in this next segment, because what we are going to do is jump heavy into the community and talk about some questions that have received very little if no answers whatsoever. So let's see if you, as our Genesis expert, can help some customers out. Chuck, are you ready? I'll give it my best shot. It's time for Stump the Expert. We love it when questions in the community get great answers, but these questions fell on hard times. No one was able to answer their plea for knowledge. Can our ragtag group of experts provide a helping hand? If not, there's still hope. We'll shuffle the question to our bounty board where community members can saddle up and take their best shot at answering. If they receive the best answer, they can save the day and earn some lucrative GCAP points for doing so. Giddy up. This first question comes to us from Rochelle and she wants to know about campaign sequence. She writes, hello, I started using campaign sequence late in 2017, but then found out earlier last year that there was a bug and we could be expecting a fix in around 2018 or so. I would like to find out uh, if we have any kind of an update on this, or is there a way of fully understanding the functionality of this feature aside from online documentation? Do we have any webinars? Every time there is a new dialer feature release, our company would like to run multiple campaigns, automating um, to dial each campaign on a, at a certain time and a certain number of records. Thanks in advance. Chuck, a little outside of your purview on bots, but what do you think? Any advice for Rochelle? Sure, there's a couple of ways I would go. Um, you know, a lot of our new campaign features that, that have come out this year, and there's been a lot in Dialer, um, would be great candidates to have a demo uh, with our tech sales team, our Spark team. Uh, they've got really knowledgeable people that can walk you through examples, how, how to run those campaigns successfully, how to manage them, and then how to sequence with other data that's coming in. So I'd recommend reaching out to your account executive and talking about getting a sales demo or a tech sales demo uh, going, and they could walk you through all the cool stuff. There's professional services teams that could help. Uh, you could even call support and they could answer basic questions about here's a next thing that you might try to, to resolve your issue. So a lot of great resources to help. Awesome, terrific. Let's go ahead and knock out another one real quick here. Uh, this one comes to us from Withaya. With I wanted to know about multiple Active Directory environments, he says, in my environment, I have Active Directory for servers and another Active Directory for workstations. How CIC server can authenticate with workstations domain? What may we need from infrastructure to achieve? Chuck, right. any advice? Yeah, you know, there's 
the great news is we're a Microsoft shop. We built a lot of our tool sets on, on Microsoft. So we work very well with any of the Microsoft Active Directory uh, setup, command, configuration components. What you might do is um, take a look at our test lab site. You can get to it again through no.genesis.com. Um, and test lab shows all the different parts and features and components that, that we connect with. If you have specific questions about a, a way to configure it or some configuration issue, you can talk to care team. And you know, the broader issue is there's always professional services that can help. If you can't get the job done on your own, we've got a lot of great teams to help solve the problem with you. Awesome. Uh, we are blazing through these. Let's go ahead and see what Jeff wanted to know about uh, getting system schedule state via web query, ICWS question mark. Jeff writes, I'm wondering if it's possible to get the state slash status of a system schedule for interaction administrator through a web query. What I was hoping for was the simple URL query that would simply return a value state of whether a specific schedule was active or not. Reason for asking is that I'd like to be able for our website to show whether the contact center is open or not. And was hoping a simple query could return it without needing a full-blown ICWS query with authentication. Otherwise, if ICWS is required, where would I start? Thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Chuck? Yeah, well, the great thing about our tool set is it's incredibly flexible. We've got handlers that can do almost anything. If there is specific guidance that you need about how to build out the handler to pull back that info, it's, it's not uncommon for us to set up a green light, yellow light, red light kind of indicator or set up um, information about we're open, we're closed. There are lots of cool ways we, we could do that, but you might start with, again, a, a care call, um, a, a PS engagement, or you know, ultimately you're, you're talking about ICWS specific kinds of um, API knowledge We've got a lot of really knowledgeable people in our dev support group. So you, you could uh, request uh, you know, assistance for a specific issue. I've got this problem. I need to be able to demonstrate up, down status. And we've got lots of team members that can help you build that out and, and design it. Awesome. Um, for Pure Connect, I can't remember off the top of my head. Do they have a uh, dev specific community? Well, we've got... Um, trying to remember I know lots of lots of resources that, that we get into the you know it, moving from uh, hey is there somewhere that I could submit a request or a ticket or what whatnot you know the community forum is often the place where uh, people are putting up their snippets of code and other people are responding with snippets of code um, in terms of the specific developers I think you really want access to the people inside Genesis who can who can assist so either care is your front door um, or doing a search uh, within our um, uh, our, our tech ref resources and other kinds of things on a documentation site um, would also be able to, to help. But you know, ultimately, if you find that that right person, you've opened a ticket and, and you've got one of our dev support guys uh, weighing in, they'll have ways and ideas that, that they could provide very, very quickly. So we've got great resources. Cool. Sounds great. I'm sure he appreciates it. Um, let's go ahead and take a sneak peek at William's question here. Um, make sure you're paying attention to your screen because there's a lot of code that I'm going to try to avoid reading. William wants help with getting value of display name in an API call. He writes, hello everyone, please forgive my noobishness, but I'm learning fast. I've been going through the ICS AP, ICWS API documentation. I'm trying to get the value of display name under the license properties dash additional licenses. For Jay Smith, I'm trying to get a list of all the licenses he's assigned to. This is what I'm getting with ICWS uh, slash configuration. Look at that beautiful script. Um, he goes on to say, I tried these two calls. You can see those here. Um, what I would like as a result of my query is only the details I'm interested in. And then he gets into this. Um, he thanks us in advance for any information that we can provide. Chuck. Does William have reason to thank you for your assistance? Well, you know, the great thing is we are a platform built with lots of coders and we've got lots of coders that, that are writing their own select statements and, and pulling back all, all that kinds of data. Um, really, you're, you're talking about some very specific nuances of getting the code to, to pull back one thing. You know, one, one method is you dump out lots of data and then filter it via your, your preferred Excel spreadsheet or other kinds of things. Um, if you've got an automated multi-step 
uh, you know, refining and processing, then you can either kick it around with, again, a, a care team assistance, uh, you know, any one of our training classes would have experts where they're training you on how to do those things and, and they would be able to talk to you very specifically about technical issues and technical code. Um, you know, the beauty of our community is we've got a lot of people writing codes and statements and, and flexing the tool to be able to do the kinds of things you're talking about. So we don't lack for resources. Um, you really just either could take a class on that, uh, could engage with care or work with PS resources and, and they'd get you taken care of. All right, awesome. Um, William, good luck on your search for knowledge. All right, this next question, actually, it turns out this isn't a question, but I saw an interesting post from Anthony regarding chatbot, chat widget, and Google Dialog Flow. Anthony writes, I got some help from Genesis and our gold partner, Rendat, on how to configure Dialog Flow with the chat widget. This may be helpful to some of you. And then he gets into what the bot ID was, how to um, do some uh, client emails and stuff like that. Um, but in general, this is just something that uh, Anthony wanted to share. Chuck, it came to my attention because I know you're one of our bot uh, gurus, and yep. I just wanted to see: do you have any um, do you have any feedback for what Anthony shared here, or any advice sure. for um, customers looking to jump in on the conversation? Absolutely. You know what, what's great about the Google technologies we work with is we've had Dialogue Flow in place for all of 2019 uh, since 2019 R1. Um, we released it. We have support for other bots as well, um, and the key that you really can benefit from in working with Genesis is that we've got a number of different bot providers, a number of different ways to flex from one bot to a different bot. So whatever the channel that you need to deliver bot on, we can make calls to Google and, and do that for voice, for chat bots, uh, for mobile IVR, for example. And the best part about Google is that they continue to really drive forward with a lot of resources to make the language support much more rich and robust. So, you know, they're aiming at 120 languages they could support with their bots. They've got, you know, let's say 20 or 30 that are really starting to come together and there are more that have pieces and parts of, of the language support. They've got just tremendous resources going into agent assist questions and we're doing contact center AI uh, in, in coordination with Google. And the ability to use their tools to do really smart things is, is where we're at today, and we will just continue to refine and build on that. So for web chat channel or voice bots uh, coming in, you know, running all of your calls against a voice bot if you want it, we have Google that is there. We have great relationship, and, you know, we're really continuing to build on that in 2020 in, in big, big ways. Awesome. Cool. Well, um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, none of our questions exactly stumped you. Uh, thank you for the help that you were able to give and thank you so much for being on the show. Anything you want to add in closing before we wrap up here? Well, you know, it's a lot of fun to get to talk to uh, the broader community and, and uh, fill you in on, on some of the, uh, the, the secret sauce of, of who can help and, and who can take your questions the next step. Uh, you know, the, the big picture that, that I've got about Peer Connect and the broader teams that are helping support Peer Connect, we have great resources, we have great people, we have folks that are really excited to be able to help you out and take the next step in your implementation. So don't hesitate to reach out, we're here to support you. And you know we're having a lot of fun building really cool, simple, flexible, amazing customer experiences right alongside you, our business customers. Awesome, cool. Chuck, can't thank you enough for your time today, really appreciate it. Um, hope to have you on the show again. Would look forward to it. Thanks for tuning in for this week's episode. We hope it was helpful and maybe a little bit entertaining. Each week, our hosts and experts review community discussions and debate what content to discuss so your voice matters. Do we miss something? Do you have a question for the show? Let us know. Join the conversation at the Genesis online community. As a Genesis customer or partner, you can create an account. Just click the sign in button found on most pages and follow the necessary instructions to create an account. Also, feel free to email us at qashow at genesis.com. We'd love to hear from you. If this is your first episode, welcome. You can view our entire archives. Go to the helpful links panel found on most community pages and find the QA Show archive that interests you. We appreciate your support of the show and the community. Cheers!